Uh, let's turn to Elizabeth O'Shea, who's a parenting specialist at Parent for Success. Elizabeth, uh, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. How big a problem is this? It is a big problem. It doesn't start as a big problem. Parents are quite happy to introduce some of the social media sites, and as it gets, as the children get older, they start spending more and more time, and parents really struggle to get them off social media and off electronic devices. We'll come on to what you can do as a parent to, to stop that happening, or at least sort of ration what's going on. But on this point about uh, approbation, this idea of getting liked, winning approval, I mean, you know, grown-ups are just as guilty of doing that, aren't yes. they? Yes, and you get that small dopamine hit as an adult when you get a like on Facebook. And it's almost like social media is the new smoking. It's how children start becoming grown-up. It's how they start developing their space in the world. And it's really important that at adults and parents particularly manage that. Let's go on to managing it then. It, th there's an absolutist approach. Joe Tidy mentioned it uh, with a school in his report there saying social media free zone. So you can kill the whole thing off at least for an hour or two in a day. Do the curfew thing where you turn off the internet, scoop up all the mobile phones, we'll charge them in the kitchen, you can have them back tomorrow morning. Lots of schools do that. You can't take your phone into Yes. into school so there are there are strategies there are what's really important is to think you're not trying to control your children you're trying to teach them self-control of course that's a cracking slogan it's really important <laughs> because what you need to do as a parent is to try and teach them how to manage their social media use and i mean partly it's about setting up rules before they even get the phones before they get the social media platforms yeah. so that you have the rules you know you have to befriend me i have to be following you um, so that the parents can then monitor the child. It's also about saying to the child, I need to know all your passwords and I will check your phone periodically with or without your permission. Mm. So don't ever post anything you wouldn't want me to see. But then it's about discussions. It's about talking with your children. It's having you talking know, a family parents, meeting. Sometimes, you know, casting that intelligence net wide over the playground so that actually if somebody has been doing a bit of low-level cyberbullying, you know about it. Yes, and it's also about teaching your children. In fact, I think no child should be given a smartphone until they can prove to their parents that they know how to do it, what the problems are, and how they would manage that problem to make sure it doesn't happen to You're them. You're not going to choose an age, are you? Because it varies from child to child. Absolutely. But... You know, you have to decide how old your child should be when you have a mobile mm. phone. So if your child, if you're not sure that your child has all the answers, you play the what if game. What would you do if you saw an image that you didn't like? What would you do if a boy asked you to send a photograph of you in your underwear? You need to be certain that your child knows the answer to those before you even let them have that phone. What about going for a, a really rudimentary phone? so that, you know, as you pack off your 11-year-old to secondary school, they're starting to take the train or the bus to school for the first time. Yes. They can still call home they're in an emergency, but they're not trawling through social media. Absolutely, and those, those are the best phones to have for a youngster. When, when a child is older, it's like having those rules. The mobile phone has to be charging downstairs overnight. Mm. Because otherwise, children lose sleep. It's like leaving a bottle of alcohol next to an alcoholic and saying, I'm trusting you not to yeah. touch it. You have to change what you do with your children. But you have to teach them and discuss with them and get rules established in your house that are realistic and that the children agree to. Otherwise, you're fighting a losing battle. They're going to have secrets. So, um, so much of this assumes... Uh, both knowledge and desire on the parts of the parents. The knowledge of what's going on and what the technology is and what the software does and the desire to keep across it. Because part of the problem, I think, for a lot of parents is that maybe, then maybe they get their head around Instagram. Six months later, unbeknownst to them, something else has come along. Instagram's old hat. Yes, and in fact, Snapchat is a real danger because you can't follow your child on Snapchat. And Snapchat have maps. You can actually spot exactly where a child is to the point where you can even tell yeah. whether they're no, in their garden kid, or in their house. Yeah, yeah. It's frightening what a child can do. And if you're not managing that profile, if you're not managing their use of Snapchat and Instagram, they're the new ones. Facebook is kind of old hat with some of the youngsters mm. now. So it's about talking to children. It's about having that knowledge yourself. You need to be well informed if your child is going to have a smartphone because there are so many dangers. Elizabeth, maybe you knew when you were growing up, I did certainly, those kids whose parents had taken the absolute absolutist stance and said, you know, we're going to switch on Radio 3, there's going to be no telly for you. And the kids were ever so slightly eccentric as a consequence of it. Uh, where do you stand on those... You know, are, there will be parents who will say, you know, we're not going to do this, we're not going to play this game at all. They're going to have endless access to social media via other children on the school bus, in the school playground, whatever it is. But at home, forget it, they're not having it. Are they being Luddites? 
do you know, when you accept smartphones into your home, it's like getting a Trojan horse. You have to learn to manage it. It's not a bad thing on its own. So learn to manage it, you're not, you're not saying actually just deny them? No, because otherwise children set up secret profiles and then you can't manage what they're doing. They can't manage their privacy settings. You can't manage parental controls. You have to be there discussing with your children and forcing them to do a presentation if necessary so that they can prove that they're old enough to have a phone. <laughs> That's a lovely idea. Elizabeth O'Shea, really good to talk to you. Thanks Thank very much you. indeed. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's just